we've spoken to a number of other tech players within uh, kind of this earnings season who've all said, look, what we've seen with the pandemic is that it's really just br driven these broader structural, secular rotations into tech and into technology as being kind of the new thing. Is that the case with your business? Is that the acceleration that you've also seen? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as companies uh, emerge from or post-pandemic, they will uh, accelerate their, their digitization plans and that, that will inevitably lead to, to some investment in artificial intelligence. But also during the pandemic, the firms that are doing well are the ones that rely on a lot of artificial intelligence. E-commerce, for example, um, in the US we saw um, 10 years' worth of growth in, in three months at the outset of the pandemic, and a lot of that is fueled by, by artificial intelligence for search and, and so on. So the gains in your share price have been astronomical, over 80% year-to-date. The, the pullback suggests to you that investors are concerned about forward guidance? The, um, the pullback we saw on Friday, I think, was a, a direct result of the the run-up that we saw uh, prior to the results. Um, you know, from our perspective, we're, we're on our plans for this year. And, um, you know, the, um, the, the market took a little bit of heat out of those, out of those numbers. Um, but from our perspective, we're, we're on plan. Mark, in the news right now, uh, sources are telling Bloomberg that the, uh, the Chinese policymakers have now imposed new restrictions on the export of artificial intelligence technologies when it comes to those that go to the United States. Of course, we continue to see the tensions between uh, the U.S. and China playing into TikTok as well. Uh, when it comes to your business, I know that you have customers in China as well, and you see this bifurcation of technologies, this tech trade war happening on the side. Lines. Does that affect your business in a meaningful way? So we've set up our operation in China to be completely air-gapped from the rest of our business, you know, in anticipation of, of some of the things that, are, that have occurred. So we can continue to, um, to, to serve China from China. Um, in addition, you know, we're early into China at the moment, and uh, whilst it's an important growth pillar for us, I don't think we'll be highly dependent upon it. So. Um, you know, we, um, we, we've set things up in a manner that, that uh, insulates us in, in some ways, but also the dependence is not high. Are you concerned at all on the Australia-China tensions as well, being an Aussie firm? You know, it's hard to predict how these things will play out. Um, we, as I said, have set things up so, so we can deal reasonably independently. Um, but yes, we, you know, we keep our eye on the situation and uh, we'll react accordingly. But it is very hard to predict how these things are going to play out. Your customers, of course, include the likes of Apple, Google, Microsoft. Is there any concern for you in terms of how you could potentially get dragged into the US-China trade story? Uh, of course we have some concern, but we also like to... Um, you know, serve our customers in in the uh, sort of in the in the background, if you will. We don't talk publicly about about our customers um, and um, or about who they are and the projects we do. Um, but um, given the fact that we deal in both environments, in the U.S. and in China, um, you know, we could get dragged into it. But but as I said, we're trying to maintain things in China reasonably autonomously, so we can deal with the the two markets.